get ready to bloom. Get ready to bloom, you guys. It is time. It is time. You have planted, you have planted, and you have planted, especially these last 12 months, but I know these last 12 years, you have planted, you have done the work, you have trusted God, and he is saying, get ready to bloom. This is it. The season is coming for blooming and, and sprouting and to seeing new things come in your life. So are you ready for the message? Say, hmm, that's good. <laughs> Amen. So when we talk about blooming, I can't help but think about seeds. And so I did a lot of looking um, and uh, searching about seeds. And uh, so I just want to bring this message to you just as we think about seeds that they do lay dormant for a time. And honestly, it's because it's not the right time for them to bloom. You wouldn't want your seed, you wouldn't want to say, plant some seed and have it bloom in the beginning of winter because then you would never get to enjoy that blossom. It would die. It wouldn't survive in that time. So there's a timing to seed as for it to harvest and for it to be sprouted. And so there's a time for this seed to not lay dormant any longer. And the time has come. It's time. It's time to bloom. God knows the right season and he's telling you today it's time for some of these dreams in your heart and the things that you've planted to, to come now to fruition. It's a new season and it's a new day. So you wonder, Margie, what seeds have I planted? I hate gardening. <laughs> I'm a terrible gardener myself, actually. Plants cry when I come even near them. They just, they just please stay away. And uh, so they don't necessarily want to be in my care. But what seeds have you planted? I'm going to begin with, as we think about these past 12 months, tears. You've planted a lot of tears this past 12 months. We all have. It's been the hardest, one of the hardest 12 months that I think any of us have had, at least collectively. As a group of people, these past 12 months have been hard. And you have prayed, you've cried a lot of tears. And actually, God sees those as prayers. Because he knows there's times when there's no words. There's nothing more that you can say. And you cry. And he sees those. It says in Psalm 56 that he collects all of our tears. Isn't that wonderful to know we have a God who cares enough to collect every single tear that we cry? He's aware and he knows and he hears those tears as prayers. It says one, in Psalm 126 that those who sow their tears as seeds will reap a harvest with joyful shouts of glee. They may weep as they go out carrying their seed to sow but they will return with joyful laughter and shouting, with gladness as they bring back armloads of blessing and a harvest overflowing. Amen? Wow. Tears. <laughs> Who'd have thought tears could produce a harvest? But they do. They, they are seeds planted in the ground. God hears the tears. He, he sees them and he knows what they're speaking. What else have you sown? You guys have sown scriptures. You've been taught to sow the word of God in your life, and I know you've done it. You guys have sown love, patience, and peace. You, sh you have sown financially when you weren't even certain about your own future. You guys, you have sown, and God sees it. He's aware of it. But I know it has stayed quiet, and you wonder, is anything happening? There is. <laughs> Get ready to bloom because there's something happening. And I can't wait to tell you what is all happening. You all have planted scriptures. You've sown scriptures into your life. Psalm 1 says, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. And they are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all that they do. Man, those seeds are planted along the riverbank. They're bearing fruit in the season. Remember I said the right season. We don't want to go having a flower in the middle of winter and have it just die. So God knows the season, but you have been planting scriptures. When you meditate on the word, and don't let that word freak you out, the devil just copied what God originated. He talked about meditating on the word throughout the Bible, and that means just thinking about the scripture, taking even one scripture and thinking about it, taking it apart. What does it mean for my life? As well as studying it. You guys have done that. 
And you found scriptures that talk about all of the different areas of concern. In fact, if you haven't um, gotten specific scriptures for each area, I just encourage you to do that. It, it just, you know, when you want corn, you don't plant, you know, asparagus seeds. And when you want strawberries, you don't plant apple seeds, but you plant that thing that you're needing. And so there's seasons in your life where you're going to need to just plant specific seeds. And I believe that you've done that. And if you didn't know about that, then start that. You can get books that are about are topical where you can, where they just list seeds, uh, uh, verses on seeds, as well as verses on peace or joy or finances or your children. And so you, you want to plant towards specific things. That's always helpful. But you guys have done it. You have found scriptures. You've been standing on them. And, and that, God sees that. You've not, it's not gone unnoticed. That's real seed. That is probably one of the most powerful seeds you can plant in your life is scripture. There's so much power in scripture. And then... You've planted love, patience, and peace. <laughs> Has this been the year for that or what? Talk about trials and trying of our faith and trying of our patience and trying to steal our peace. It's been the year. But James says, but the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere and those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap the harvest of righteousness. We plant seeds of peace, oh, of mercy and love and gentleness at all times. And listen, I, I'll be the first to say I've not been perfect at that. <laughs> Thankfully, it's not a shoots and ladder game when you had a bad week and it makes you go down the chute and start all the way at the beginning. That's not what life is. We just pick back up, right? You just keep showing up. Doesn't matter what yesterday was. You just show up again today and we're going to do better today and walk in those things of love and patience and peace. And you guys have done it. You guys have done acts of love that God sees. You guys have shown patience and peace where maybe it was only God seeing it. Maybe your family got to witness it as well. That's always lovely. But um, you guys have done it and God sees it. It's been a contentious, combative, hard year, not just only COVID, but so many other things that we've just had to contend with and, and it has affected our friendships, it has affected our families. And you guys have worked hard to, sh to sow peace and kindness and graciousness and love and compassion, forgiveness. I know a lot of you though, it's, it's been hard, it's been heartbreaking when probably everybody in this room uh, could say they've le lost at least one friend during this past year, maybe more, and maybe high tensions within families as you struggle with all the different issues that have happened in this past year. And you guys, we've not done it perfectly. But our goal has always been, and I believe that's been in your heart, to just walk in grace and walk in kindness and walk in peace. And when we've done it wrong, we've apologized. We've said we're sorry. and We've tried. It says do as best as you can to live at peace with one another. You know, we've done our best. And maybe it hasn't always worked out and you have lost a friend. But God has seen you try. And you know what? It's not gone unnoticed. Get ready to bloom. <laughs> All right, y'all have homeschooled this year. All right, talk about an opportunity to sow peace and patience. Well, I know homeschool parents are just, this is your chance to roll your eyes at us. Absolutely, I know. You're good at it. You've done it. it seems simple. But for novices who, you know, your grandkids are in first grade and third grade and you're just jumping into it, it's awful. It was terrible. <laughs> So there we were at the beginning of September, you know, and the kids went back to school, but then, the, you know, the schools are trying to decide whether to stay open. And just at that time, my daughter, who's seven and a half months pregnant at that point, her back goes out. She literally can't get out of bed. She cannot walk. She can't do anything. So in the bed, she's trying to figure out, you know, how to get classrooms set up in their dining room and headsets so they don't disturb each other. And, you know, just all of this craziness. And then the first day of homeschooling, Rick and I did it that first day. <laughs> that was our first and last day. <laughs> I think what we almost couldn't manage was seeing the, the video of the kids in the classroom. You know, they're all zooming in or whatever it was they were doing. You're seeing the kids jumping on the bed and walking in out of the room and crawling on the floor and eating potato chips. And God bless you teachers. Can we just give an applause to the teachers who had to do this? <laughs> 
I know all sorts of craziness we've heard on the news, what teachers had to see when they were, you know, Zooming with their kids, but man, oh man. So we did it for one day and then we called in backup. We brought in my son and daughter-in-law from California. <laughs> to stay for two weeks to help homeschool those kids till Abby is back on, got back on her feet. So my hat's off to all of you. What an opportunity to, sh to sow patience, for our patience to be tried and frustrations to be over the top of our heads, but yet you endeavor to walk in love and kindness with the teachers, with your children, with the dog, with your spouse. You guys really had to do it and you did and it didn't go unseen. God sees it. And you know, like Rick said this morning, you know, you feel like, oh, this, this is the last straw. I've done it one too many times. Never with God, because you can just always tell God, I am sorry, I repent, I'm showing up again, I'm gonna do this thing, and I'm gonna walk in patience, I'm gonna lean on you and your help, God. So you just keep hopping back in that game, as well as then there's something on the whole other side and those that of you have been isolated, maybe you're still isolated, you're at, you're at home, and, and uh, you know, you've already, maybe you were living alone, and then for a while there, you couldn't even see anybody, you couldn't see family or friends, you couldn't hang out with somebody, and it made that isolation even greater. Um, those of you who have uh, parents in convalescent homes, and you could only talk to each other through the glass, I can't even imagine just the patience you had to, to have to endure that and the sadness and those tears that were planted during that time as you grieved over not getting to touch or see um, uh, your family member. And so God sees all of that. You, you, you really extended patience. And you guys, you're champions. You're awesome. You did it. You've been through a year, man. And uh, you're on the other side. We're getting to the other side of this. You have sown finances. 2 Corinthians says, remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but those who plant generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. Don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. That was you guys this year, man. You sowed into the work of this church. You probably sowed into other ministries, and uh, God saw that. Even when you didn't know what your own future held, you didn't know if you were gonna keep your job or not, you didn't know when you would be called back to work, or if you would be, you didn't know if you had lost a job, if you would get another one. And yet you kept sowing into the church. You kept sowing into God's work through other ministries. You kept supporting orphans. You guys are awesome. You guys kept bringing food for another dude. Hallelujah. You guys did it. You've sown cheerfully, you've trusted, you've extended your faith, you planted seed. And now it's time to bloom. Harvest is coming. God says it's time. Let me just speak that over you. It is time. It's time to bloom. Get ready to bloom. It's coming. You have planted and it's coming. About this time in the service, my, my voice gets dry. I don't understand. I didn't even try to sing. I don't know. I even had a mask on. I don't understand, but... I'm drinking tea. Y'all don't mind, do you? Can you say, mm, that's good? Okay, way to go. Thanks, Daniel, for that. <clears throat> so there's uh, three things, basic needs, uh, that plants need to grow. Back to the seed again. All those things that we just went through that you planted. Um, there's some things, oh, I'm sorry. Before we go to the three, three basic needs, I want to talk to you about darkness. So we've been through a dark year, 12 months, Seemed kind of long, kind of dark. But you know what? So much happens in the dark. <laughs> a lot happens in the dark. In fact, when you plant seeds, you can't give it too much light. They really have to be under the dirt. If they get too much light, they will not germinate and nothing will happen. And some seeds, if they're planted too deep though, they struggle to germinate because they're just too deep. <laughs> but you know, I believe that God Planted, when you planted those seeds, he pushed them a little bit further down because it wasn't the season. It wasn't time. They couldn't germinate yet. God said, not yet, not yet, but I believe it's time. And when you stir up that soil and those seeds get to the surface, then they're ready to bloom. And so, but it's still in darkness. Like I said, they can't be in the light or they won't germinate. And so in that soil, it's dark. And I believe that a lot of us felt like we were in a dark place last year. It was just, you know, hard. It was a hard year. And like those seeds that were planted deep in the darkness, 
Maybe some of you felt like you were just sitting in the darkness. But you know what? God knew that you needed to be hidden in this time and hidden in the safety of his fortress and hidden in the comfort of his wings. You are not just in darkness. You may not have realized that you were actually in God's fortress. You weren't just in darkness. You didn't realize, but maybe you were just held in the comfort under his wings, but he had you. He never let go of you this year. He's been with you through the hard and the easy, the sad and the grieving, the joyful news and the sad news. He's been with you through it all. The darkness is not always a bad place. Maybe you're just in safety. So now, the three things that the, that seed needs to grow. Um, it needs favorable temperatures. And when we talked about that love and patience and peace that you sowed, that also gives your seed favorable temperatures to grow in. That's where your seeds thrive. It's, it's in the anger and continual frustration and just fed up forever and this is it. That's not favorable temperature. That's where your seeds won't thrive. And I know we were there some days, but not one, one day of that won't kill your seed. <laughs> And you guys were good about planning that patience and rising up out of frustration and going into the deal again with, with peace and trusting in God and sowing lots of love. And that was great temperatures for your seeds to thrive. Get ready to bloom. Amen. The second one is oxygen. A couple weeks ago, my son, we, we were doing a whole series on the words we speak and he used the metaphor of your breath. And your breath, the breath of your words, is the oxygen for those seeds. Proverbs 18 says the tongue can bring death or life, and those who t love to talk will reap the consequences. Well, there's a warning. <laughs> but those uh, that your tongue can bring life and death, that's the oxygen in the room. That's the oxygen over your seed. And it can produce death, but you guys, you kept your words positive. Again, we had those moments and we had those days, but you know what? One, a day of less oxygen is okay. You guys kept speaking positive. You kept speaking over your situations. You kept uh, uh, trusting in God and, and, and kept planting things and oxygen of your words, those good, powerful confessions that you made were, was, a, was oxygen to those seeds so that they could germinate and sprout. And let me, I'm just going to throw in a side bit because it's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, ladies. Um, for those of you who have children, even grandchildren, um, I believe that you were, you know, endeavoring your best to speak positive words over your kids, especially when you had to homeschool them for the first time. <laughs> there you were just making efforts to speak positive. Uh, but I also want to encourage you that how awesome would it be if they overheard you say really cool things about them to somebody else? Kind of bragging on them to somebody else, not like rubbing something in somebody's face, you know that. But I mean just saying, man, you know, my son was just so patient with me today. And, you know, we, we ended up having a really great day, but I was just really proud of him being so patient with me when I was so busy and I couldn't give him attention right away. Or, man, I love just hanging out with my daughter. She's so cool, you know, and she just wanted to paint my nails. <laughs> Aren't they crazy? Um, so <laughs> all of those fun things that, wouldn't it be awesome if you, you know, if they could overhear you speaking really cool words about them? Yeah, amen. I'll... I'll take those claps, as well as, I'm sorry, that should be just an everyday word in your vocabulary to your children. You need to model that thing to say, that ability to say, I'm sorry, to acknowledge that you did it wrong, and that you messed up, and that you're sorry. And you're modeling that, They're gonna, you want them to say that back, right? So model that to them, there should be probably once a day, coming out of your mouth, I'm sorry. I don't think we get away with a day without needing to say I'm sorry to somebody. So um, make that part of your vocabulary. Let that be the oxygen over those seeds. You say I'm sorry, just think, oh man, I'm oxygenating, oxy I don't know, oxygenating? Is that it? I have to ask Rick, Mr. Dictionary. Um, uh, you're, you're giving oxygen to those seeds. Amen? Amen. Say, mm, that's good. Yeah. 
<laughs> and then the last thing, the third thing is water. We need water to water our seeds. <laughs> That's probably why my real houseplants struggle. Um, you need to water your seeds. And when I think of that, I think of two different things. One is the Holy Spirit and the other is scripture. And I know I've already talked about scripture that we plant scriptures. Those are seeds that we plant, man. When we meditate, we're planting. When we study, we're planting. But I also believe when we speak the word over our situations, we're also watering our situation. And I found the scripture this morning, so I didn't get in the queue of, uh, on the screens, but listen to this, Isaiah 55, the rain and snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. It's the same with my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. God's word does the same thing as the rain and snow. It waters the earth, it waters the seed. So we speak the word over our situations. We confess it. We have confession lists to speak over certain areas. I have a whole confession list for my children. We have confession lists for, for uh, peace. And we've got confessions over prosperity. You speak in those confessions, that's just watering those seeds, you guys. As you've been doing that, you've been watering the seed as well as the Holy Spirit. He waters our seed. Those Holy Spirit inspired prayers that we speak out over our seed. That, you know, there's two ways that I see the Holy Spirit moves. He, he gives us inspired prayers. Sometimes we're just alerted to what we need to pray for and feel a really strong direction to pray about something. And then also at Faith Family, we believe that there's a second infilling of the Holy Spirit, the gift of a spiritual language. It says in Romans, we don't always know how to pray, but the Spirit will intercede for us. And that's when that, that's, we're talking about that spiritual language. But in Jude, it says we build ourselves up on our most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. And so there's those times that we also pray in our spiritual language. And as you do that, you're watering your seed. It's watering the seed, which is what it needs. So it needs favorable temperatures, oxygen, and water. You've done all of that. But let me tell you, this is maybe the hardest point, in the hard, one of the hardest times, because that water, where your seed needs the water, it also fills and it makes that seed pressurized. And it's at that moment, you guys, where you want to quit. That's at that moment where you want to say, I'm done. I'm done. I'm finished. It's too much. Not only am I in darkness, but I am so pressurized. I'm not going to do it. I can't make it. But you can. This is the moment, man. Your seed is about to crack open, and that root is about to go down in the ground so that the, 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 the shoot can come up. Look at that seed, man. It, was, it burst open. That's sometimes painful. That's sometimes the hardest moment when you're under that pressure. But hang in there. Don't quit. Keep praying. Keep speaking the word. Keep using your spiritual language. Keep watering that seed and giving it good oxygen and favorable temperatures. Because you're going to bloom. Get ready to bloom. It's dark and you're still not seeing a single thing. It's pressurizing. But a root has gone down. Life is happening. Life is happening in that darkness. Life is happening under the ground. And you can't see it yet, but it's coming. Say, it's time. It's time. So now your root is getting established. And it's taking in all the nutrients of that oxygen and that temperature and the water. So keep doing it. And then a couple more things I want to cover. Because I want you to know that seeds are never wasted. There's not one seed you've planted that is wasted. 1 Peter 4 says this, dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you're going through as if something strange were happening to you. <laughs> Instead, be very glad for the trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it's revealed to the world. Oh yeah, don't be surprised by those fiery trials. Let's talk about heat. Let's talk about fire. Listen, Sometimes, there are some trees, pine trees specifically, I know there's others, but I'm going to just talk about the pine trees, that they have seeds on their, on their tree that have been dormant for years. They're just sitting in those pine cones, doing nothing, minding their own business, nothing happening, dormant. But a fire comes through, 
Look at that pine cone. It released all of its seeds. Boop, 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 boop. Now all those seeds are on the ground. And now because of the fire, the underbrush is cleared out. So those seeds didn't just land on top of another leaf or a plant, get lost somewhere on top of leaves. But instead, it, that fire, those fiery trials burned out all that underbrush, so now that seed has a chance to survive. And get this, the smoke, the smoke actually helps the seed germinate. Bring on the smoke, man. I'm in a fire. Going to germinate that seed. That's what's happening. That's why you can rejoice during trials. <laughs> because you know that fire is clearing the way and making those seeds get on the ground. And the smoke is germinating those seeds. And then the ash fertilizes the seed. Oh my goodness. So hey, that's why we can rejoice in those fiery trials because actually it is producing something. You guys get ready to bloom. It's amazing. <laughs> Nothing is wasted. No seed that has sat dormant for years. It's not wasted. It's just hanging out. It's coming. And that fiery trial might be bringing that seed to fruition. So you just hang in there. Don't give up. You're in a trial. You're feeling the heat. Don't give up. You're feeling the pressure. Don't give up because it, uh, it's coming. It's coming. It's time. And you're going to bloom. So we're going to trust him and keep planting and keep watering. It might feel like a fire is raging. That's okay because that means renewal is coming. And Isaiah 43 says, when you walk through the fire of oppression, you'll not be burned up. Amen. And the fire will not consume you. No way. It's just germinating those seeds and fertilizing them. Hey, amen. All right. And then one, one more thing I want to cover. And that is the seeds planted a long time ago. So I'm getting old. <laughs> I like to say it before I get there because I'm going to be 60 this year. Woohoo! So I know, praise God. As my mom says, you know, what's the alternative? So she's right. <laughs> so here we are. And so there's some seeds I planted a long time ago 10, 20, 30 maybe longer. Seeds that I planted a long time ago. And you know, I think that's the same for you and you're wondering what on earth, is anything gonna happen with those? Are they just gonna be just there and forgotten? Well, let me tell you about the Paris Natural Museum of History. Yeah, that's how you say it. They had seeds that had been pressed and mounted on archive paper. These plants were over 200 years old, 221 to be exact, in the writing of this article. And they looked at those seeds and they checked them out, and you know what? They were still viable. They were only dormant. 220 years later, they could still sprout. Isn't that crazy? So is anyone here older than 221? Can I just see real quick? Anybody out there? Just write it in the chat. I'm over 221 years old. Um, and uh, so that's not you. So you know what? Your seeds are way viable. You haven't even hit any expiration date on those, baby. So the seeds you have planted are still going to sprout at the right time and in the right fire. It's going to happen. So listen to this, Psalm 92. Even in old age, they will still produce fruit. Amen. Woo, they're vital and green and they will declare the Lord is just. He is my rock and there's no evil in him, even in old age. So you know what? Your parents' prayers are still working towards you. Amen? And the grandparents' prayers are still going to produce fruit. Your great-grandparents' prayers are still going to produce fruit in your life. The prayers you're praying now, you may be gone, long gone, but they're going to still produce fruit in your children's lives. Amen? Amen. Woo, so we're still viable. We can, we can succeed through fiery trials. The pressure may be on, but we're going to make it because it's all producing something in us. Amen. Well, listen, I want to end with something. Yeah, believe it or not, I'm ending. And I, there's this wonderful Bible verse in the Song of Solomon. There's a couple of verses. And it's, uh, it's the shepherd king 
Jesus talking to us. And I felt like it just summed this up so well. And I feel like it's a pro prophetic word to each and every one of you here today, both men and women, young and old. This is a word. How many of you have ever wanted God to speak so specifically to you and to your life? I have. I'm always asking, God, I'm ready for another word. Well, this is it. This is a word spoken to each of you. And I want you to take it to heart as if God himself was pro pro prophesying it to you. It's straight out of the word. That's the best and steadiest way to get a word is straight out of the word of God. So I want to pray this. I want to speak this over you. And there's going to be a picture, a video of a plant emerging from a seed and finally coming into a flower. And I want you to see that's you. That's what I'm talking about today. Get ready to bloom, okay? The one I love calls to me, arise my dearest, hurry my darling, come away with me. I have come as you have asked to draw you to my heart and lead you out. For now is the time, my beautiful one, the season has changed, the bondage of your barren winter has ended, and the season of hiding is over and gone. The rains have soaked the earth and left it bright with blossoming flowers. The season for singing and pruning the vines has arrived. I hear the cooing of doves in our land, filling the air with songs to awaken you and guide you forth. Can you not discern the new day of destiny breaking forth around you? The early signs of my purposes and plans bursting forth. The budding vines of new life are now blooming everywhere. The fragrance of their flowers whispers, there's change in the air. Arise, my love, my beautiful companion, and run with me to the higher place. For now is the time to arise and come away with me. Amen. Here I'm calling you. Here I'm telling you. You get to get ready to bloom. Get ready for harvest. You guys have been diligent. You've been so diligent, not only this past year, but I know years and years before this ever arrived. And God sees and he knows and he's saying, get ready to bloom. There's a new day of destiny. His plans and purposes are bursting forth for your life. Your seeds are budding and it's time. It's time. Get ready to bloom. Amen.